G'day listeners, this episode is proudly brought to you by our major sponsor, supshq.com.au. Use code BENS15 at checkout to receive 15% off on your next purchase. G'day listeners, welcome back to another episode of the Matter Mentality podcast. In this episode, we are diving, as you are probably aware now, into episode nine. We are getting into a bit more behind the scenes stuff around prep and business, and we're diving into a few things with our clients. So let's get into it. We are currently, myself and two of our clients, uh, currently 14, 16, and 18 weeks out from prep from show day, um, meaning we are currently about, I would say, in the getting to the back end of the first phase, really of prep, the first real uh, tightening up phase and period that comes with the prep, the most extreme in terms of weight loss, um, the, the, large, the, the most rapid response of weight loss that's going to occur, I think. Um, having now resting my high days, we're still keeping the same system as the week that has gone for myself. So five low days and two high days. But uh, last week was a deload for us. So we, we pushed our training intensity in the block currently to a bit of an extreme um, and reactively we responded with recognizing numbers started to dip, perceived recovery was decreasing, um, stress was increasing and physiological stress seemed to be going up. Fatigue was sort of, incre- uh, uh, what's the word? It was encroaching a little bit. So to brush some of that off and relieve some of that built fatigue and exhaustion, we took a reactive deload last week, cutting volume by practically 50%. Um, to try and alleviate some of that tension, some of that built-up fatigue and exhaustion, which gave us a good chance to get some more sleep, rest, recovery, focus on business, focus on work. And now we are into the next meso of the program with a few modifications of programming. So again, there's nothing here to hide from us. So basically what we're doing, what was the intensifiers we're using on our hack squats and pendulums, which you've probably seen a few videos on our Instagram. You can definitely go over and see on my personal one that we train our legs pretty hard and make sure that we are pushing the sets that we are doing to pretty close proximity to failure every single set, every single session. Is that ideal for everyone? No, we do. I do believe in titrating and tapering up intensity. However, at this point of prep, the key is output and intensity. So we are trying to achieve that. But after coming back from deload, we had a bit of a sloppy leg day whereby the numbers just weren't where they should have been. The, the, uh, progressions were not where they should have been after this point of a deload. So recognizing that there is no point pushing and digging further into a fatigue hole that would have led to less output and less recovery. The next point for us will be to return to a standardized set of hack squats and pendulums and putting the intensifiers towards the back end of the program of the, of the session to make sure that the fatigue, the, the, the strength acquisition that we're trying to achieve, the, the progressive overload is stimulated first and then we can force some greater intensity and output towards the back end in a more controlled and less risk-based fashion. So that means we're looking at standard sets of eight to 12 now on our hacks and pendulums as opposed to cluster sets of eight until failure. So as we've talked about before, basically what we're doing was looking at eight sets, oh, sorry, eight reps, um, three to four sets with 15 seconds rest between each set only. And that is one working cluster set that we would do until the point of failure and we couldn't achieve any more reps and then aim to progress that. That intensity was kind of getting a bit too high. Recovery wasn't quite where we needed to be. So because of that, it was going to lead to a decrease in total work volume, which is not ideal in a prep. Uh, we got, we kind of wanted out of that part of the program, that phase, that meso cycle. So now we're going to push the, the intensifiers to leg extensions, at the back end of the session, where it's a little more isolated and a little more easy to achieve mechanical, uh, sorry, muscular failure and make sure that we push through that absolute uh, proximity as best we can with things like drop sets and cluster sets. So we'll still include that to that degree and make sure this level to push the intensity nice and high, but not at the risk of overall fatigue and systematic fatigue uh, development that's going to run risks of prep towards the back end. There has been no diet breaks yet. Um, there has been, or for myself, there's been no diet breaks yet. We're still pushing five low days to high days. High days are currently finishing now in the 96s, which is fantastic. It's moving along nicely. We have had relatively 97s and 98s post high day. So I will base my weights on a Sunday morning after a high day, uh, sorry, after a week of five low days. 
Um, and then I will base my weight again on the Monday morning, which is a post high day after Sunday. So trying to make sure we've got fuel for the shoulder push sessions that we have on Monday morning. So going by those two weights, I can see what the averages and trends are and post weights, uh, post high days now are about in the, the high 96s. So come this Sunday morning, uh, we predominantly like to see the 94s be roughly where, where the landmarkers end up. Um, and that's kind of a, a really good sign that things are in the right trajectory. And we are going to pretty much achieve the, the overall rate of loss that we're hoping for, um, if not sooner. So that's a really good sign for us at this far out. I have not been in this condition or this point or this um, ease in a prep before, having tried now done, having tried four, this will be the fourth prep I've tried, give or take COVID, I lost two. So this will be the, the best position we've been in this response to a cut ever. So life is definitely in a good position to make this happen. As for the other lads, um, we are definitely in a very, very good spot. One of the guys is now chasing towards 50 mils over nine sites as let's be honest, anyone who's not doing nine sites or anything less than nine sites doesn't make sense. Seven at the least. I've seen people trying to argue for sites for body fat measurements, which makes no sense to me, but we are in the right direction. 50 odd mil over nine sites at this far out is fantastic. Um, especially for classic physique. That is a great position to be in with so much time to go and still plenty of room to adjust for food refeeds and fatigue management. So we'll be pushing both diet phases still pretty hard for both of those guys and look at refeeds or free meals in the coming weeks just to, give them a bit more fuel and energy, mental reduction or reduction in mental fatigue, diet fatigue, and give them a bit of fuel for training. So all in all, it's happening is pretty good position. And we are really getting towards the funner ends of prep now where things get harder, things get hungry. And we all start digging deep and get into that back end of who can work the hardest and suffer the most and all that jazz. Um, interesting concept, but interesting thing that always gets me is like when you speak to people who don't compete, when you speak to people who aren't really competitors, and they are obviously going, especially with their friends or family, and they're going to make comments or, or praises towards, oh, you look like going to win or you're in a great position or, uh, you know, you're working pretty hard. It's interesting when you, when you actually get up there and you realize on stage that everyone is working hard. At this point of, of a prep, at this point close to a show or a season, there is no one relatively who's going to be competitive that aren't working hard. So that's, you know, it's not that it's not a malintent comment, but it's like, it's something that everyone has to be doing. Like you, again, as, as I've said before, you don't just get first place because you work hard. Work hard is simply the ticket to the show. You're simply getting admission. You're not even guaranteed the win. Um, so it's interesting when you, when you sort of hear that from a competitor's perspective is that realistically, everyone who's going to be up there lean and going to be competitive is working hard. They have to be at this point. So it's not, you know, you, you can hear that and sort of be like, oh yeah, I can, I'm, I can pay, take the foot off the, off the gas a bit and ease up. Um, but the reality is that every single person get on stage and be working hard. And that's kind of your job to keep pushing and push harder. Even when you hear comments like that, that it may sound better than it actually is. And that's where being objective with subjective measures is so important. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like a quick update on where we are with prep. Everything is going well. Sleep has never been better. Stress managers never been better. Lifestyle systems have never been better. Everything is set up in a great position. Um, even with a new starting business, things are in a great spot and just sort of ticking over. Um, hunger is barely noticeable. It's five o'clock and I've had one meal, which is going to sound great to a lot of people, but I have two more before I, two or three, I'll probably have three more before I go to bed um, and some snacks that'll just keep me hanging hanging on and getting through the day that i'll have just to pass some time watch some tv and relax um a bit more carbohydrate based snacks so the system is working well it's responding well not going to make any changes yet we'll probably be closer to diet breaks as fatigue builds up probably in the next meso so we might get closer towards like 94 kilos in high days um which will be a matter of weeks and we'll probably look at bringing in an, an alleviation period by having diet breaks which for anyone who doesn't know or is possibly interested or even cares a diet break is where we're going to alleviate some diet fatigue, some exhaustion, some, some mental barriers by increasing calories, overall maintenance of calories um, across a week to reduce some of that overall systematic fatigue that comes with dieting so hard for so long. So where I'm doing five and two at the moment, a diet break might look like overall increase in the average amount of calories per day. And I'll do that every single day at the same amount. So be more towards say 3,500, seven days of that, like in the seven days, 
as opposed to uh, 2,000 and 4,800 over the, the five and two. So it's a bit of a bit of a way to uh, brush off fatigue, uh, replenish the mind mentally, give yourself a bit of downtime, go enjoy a movie, some food, some relaxation. You might pair it with a maintenance period or you might pair it with a, a peak in your training block um, and it will just help you basically rejuvenate and replenish the mind to push harder for the next phase. So some people like to do them uh, planned and periodically. Uh, we are seeming more likely to do it reactively. I'll probably base it on feel and base it on detriment in training, recovery loss, um, mental fatigue, exhaustion, especially running a business. I want to make sure there's plenty of fuel to keep everyone happy. I think I've said it before, but if I haven't, the, the plan, the, the agreement I've had uh, internally has always been that um, if the comp ever comes at the detriment of my clients, I will stop. And I will not put my goals first when I have a service-based business where I really put all my clients' needs first. And yes, I love having goals and I love myself physically to push myself. But if it ever gets to that point where I'm simply under-delivering on clients, then I will just pull out and not do it. So making sure that I have every box ticks that I can sustain this and give it my best shot is my goal. Um, so just making sure that everything's well-fed and well-fueled and well-ready to get through the next 14 weeks. So 14 week mark gives us South Australia or Victoria. Both are options for us. Um, it's kind of like a peak week trial. And then we'll have the Queensland national show, a state state show that we all pretty excited for. So home state to do a show there. Um, and then we'll have the Queensland national show. So this year we've been lucky enough to have the national show up in Queensland at the Sleeman center, I believe. So we'll be have, be able to have plenty of friends and family attending and, and uh, some local support in the crowd, which will be pretty cool for the big dance. So that's kind of where that is all leading to and ending up and everything seems to be on track going by the data. Um, as a, as your own coach, yes, I have some great minds around me and people I'm feeding off and bouncing off and running ideas by, but as your own coach tracking your own subjective measures objectively and consistently uh, is a great way to keep an eye on things and make sure they're tracking properly. So that's something that I've got down pat now is, is weekly reflections, weekly reviews of the information and data and being able to get back and, and put those into place or review them, um, which is going to allow me to make decisions and calls like I would any other client. The other thing is getting into business. So as we said, we're never going to be a uh, you know behind paid doors kind of business where there's a lot that we want to give away as, as transparent as possible open about so um, you know we're currently just ticking over the last of the programming slides um, this is not going to be some uh, university level degree course on programming and things of that nature but it's going to be a pretty pretty extensive learning point for a lot of people a lot of coaches a lot of students a lot of general gym goers um, you know we're really going to be exploring intensifiers, programming, set markers, volumes, case studies, how I might apply things. And again, this is going to be as something that a lot of coaches will hopefully talk about if they educate is that when it comes to programming, there's no one way to skin a cat and there's a million ways to skin a cat. And luckily this is going to be a way that I've under many coaches I've had on many systems I've watched and learned and studied and read and applied. I'm going to try and put together the best of everything I know, run it by the best of the people that I know and make sure that there is a systemized way to teach people how to program and how to go through a program and how to understand a program, how, what to look for in a program and how to lay a program out right down to the point of sessions and reps. So that should you find a coach who can't do that, you're not going to waste the money. If you find a coach who does do that, you know, they've ticked the box, you know, they have the kind of the matter tick of approval, which I in, intend to make something worth noting is that if, if these metrics aren't being checked and these systems aren't being implemented, then it's probably not worth your time as a coach. Um, whether you be a client, an experienced client, an advanced client, whether you just be a new coach yourself, you'll know when you go through the course that if you implement these things, clients will take what you have to say very seriously. If you're a new client or you're someone new to training and you have a coach who doesn't do these things, you're going to save yourself some money. So all in all, the idea is to obviously make the system and the approach to coaching in the industry overall better. So that's kind of where we are with the the next stage there of the course of so programming slides is nearly done, which will then take me on to the recovery uh, and the sleep slides, which is what I'm most excited. One of the most exciting things I'm going to be working on because off that, I want to get into advanced neuroanatomy and advanced, uh, advanced neurotransmitters, advanced neuroanatomy, advanced endocrinology. So how that all impacts each other and, and works synergistically um, as a system. That is going to be a very exciting chapter for me to, to get to write and have some fun putting together. Obviously, not everyone's going to care about that and mostly going to be writing it for me. But 
if you are interested in those things, it'll be a part of the concept course that we are going to build out. What's next? What else do we have going on? There's a, a rejig of the website this weekend. So um, by the time you probably listen to this, it may have already been done. It may not, but we're going to rejig some things on the website and give you a much better experience from start to finish and, and kind of improve how you interact and engage with Matter. There's going to be a lot more free or downloadable or interactive content that you can get your hands on. Again, we don't like to be the people who keep everything behind a closed door and a paywall. We want you to have as much for free as possible to the degree that it makes sense. So giving, giving as much information as we possibly can, giving as much interactive experience as we possibly can, subscriptions, interactions, blogs, eBooks, whatever we can do, there's plenty that we can do and there's plenty we're going to do. So keep an eye out for that. If it hasn't happened yet, by the time this comes out, or if it has, go check it out, see what you think, leave us some feedback. Um, and we have already obviously got the macro course up and running. So we're working on getting that out there and making sure people are experiencing it and really getting us some feedback on how that's working. So really that's where we are with the business this week um, clients are all moving well prep is moving well and the business is taking off so again nothing is to hide there it's all kind of where we are and what's happening it's all good fun um, but yeah that's kind of this week's this week's wrap up uh, with the podcast and episode so if you have any questions for next week's or if you have any questions or issues i think we want to talk about please do let us know each monday is going to be a lot more of a personal topic so if things you want me to dive into around training history philosophy education anything let us know um, ahead of time or reach out leave a message dm me whatever you'll do and we will make it happen or explore it uh, but yeah, that is us for that is it for us this week, guys. Hopefully, you have a great weekend, and we will chat soon.